everyone. Well, it's February the 1st, so I really shouldn't be using this, but uh, for the purpose of the introduction of the video, I'm sure you won't uh, tell me off for that one. This has been my vacuum of the month for January, the Shark Ion Flex Cordless. I've used this in my home just for one month. I haven't used any other vacuum cleaners apart from ones I've been demonstrating, but for my day-to-day -day cleaning, and I have used this more or less every day, this is the vacuum I've used. I've saved up all the dirt, so we'll empty it for the last time and I'll show you all the dirt I've gathered up and I'll give you my summary on this machine. Now I've had a chance to use it for a whole month. And also towards the end of the video, I'll be showing you what vacuum I'll be using for the month of February as voted by you, my Facebook followers. Okie dokie, I'm just going to empty it now for the last time and we'll also, of course, have a look at the filters. I haven't touched the filters in this. Sharks say you should only have to wash the filters once every month. And if you remember at the start of the month, the filter and everything was spotlessly clean. So I've not touched it. I've had a quick sneak peek occasionally, but I haven't looked at it for over a week. So it'll be interesting to see how dirty that filter is. Let's um, empty the last remains into this bin where I've kept all my, oh, there's a lot of new fluff. Now, oh, that's, that's a bit unusual, all this fluff. I've just got a new rug and I vacuumed it with that. So that's what that that's fluff's about. Got to put my hand in a bit to get some fluff around the center shroud. Right, that's empty. Shall we see how much dirt this shark's picked up in my home during the month of January? So let's get this bin liner out of this bin. A little bit of dust flying. I've never done this before and it's quite interesting to see. Now, this is regular dirt. I didn't put any extra dirt down. I've used this shark just as a normal person would use it around their home. I've used it everywhere basically. I've used it on the stairs, I've used it on my floors, I've used it to clean curtains, blinds, upholstery. The only place I haven't used it is the car, but everywhere else it has been my sole vacuum. And that is everything it's picked up. I'm going to tip it up onto the floor now. So let's have a look at everything it's picked up. Ugh. A lot of, lot of dog hair. Oh, it's a little bit more. And a lot of dust as well. Another fibrous material. So that is quite a pile of muck. Now, there's some things in here that maybe you wouldn't normally pick up all these bits of paper. Now, this is something I normally do, so that's why you'll see bits of paper. I didn't, didn't put these down for a demo. I've got uh, some of those scissors, they're special scissors that cut up all your documents. Instead of having a shredder, these scissors cut four strips at a time. So basically, instead of having a shredder, I use these scissors and cut out the address um, and any relevant details on bits of paper and I normally just let it go on the carpet and I vacuum it up later. So I've done that with every vacuum so that's why that's in there so it's not extra dirt but it's mainly as you can see I didn't realize my daisy shed so much. There will be some other fibrous dirt but there's a lot of dog hair in here and I can see dust as well. So that is pretty impressive for a cordless vacuum Everything has looked clean when I've used it, but I don't know how deep down clean it is, but I've certainly been happy with how clean it's left everything I've used it on. Okay then, it's now time to have a look at the condition of the filters. A lot of people complain that the shark filters do get dirty pretty quickly, but shark do claim no loss of suction if you wash the filters according to their instructions. Now, according to the instructions of this one, you should only have to wash the filters once a month. So it, they are due for washing. I've been using this machine since the 1st of January. It's now the 1st of February. So they will need washing, but how much will they need washing? Let's have a look. Right, quite dirty. This is the main filter which is made of a sponge material and there is another filter inside. So that is pretty clogged up and it's a mucky job. Let's move this filter out. That's the internal filter. You can see it's got a lot of dust around it. I'm going to get covered in dust. 
but there was I have just used it and I've been using it yesterday and it's been picking up still it's still been suction so it hasn't lost a tremendous amount of noticeable suction but that filter is pretty clogged it is fairly clean on the inside certainly cleaner than the outside but that will certainly need a wash and inside here where the filter sits you see how filthy that is there is the fan that obviously um, produces the suction but it's very difficult to clean this out now this is one main bugbear of this cleaner for me is the fact that you can't remove this bin now on the very first shark rocket that I owned and I've still got a mains powered one you couldn't remove the bin and I said oh that was a bit of a disadvantage for emptying so on the second generation of mains powered rockets shark made it so you could take the bin out which was easier for emptying and easier to keep the bin clean but on their first generation of cordless they've gone back to not being able to remove the bin which is ridiculous and I wouldn't be surprised if the second generation of these they make the bin removable because really for any of you who want to keep things nice and clean it is you can clean it and I have been able to clean this out using a wet wipe you need to make sure the shroud is kept clean occasionally you will get hairs wrapped around that and very occasionally while I've been using this day to day I've had to put my hand in and remove some fibrous material but that that's not been that often that does happen if I try and do a sort of a big mess test with one of these and pick up more dirt than it's designed to pick up in one go then the shroud clogs pretty quickly but for me I found general use it's been more or less okay just occasionally as I've said I've had to put my hand in and get the dirt out which isn't very nice the dirt does normally fall out when I open it out of this part here but look how filthy it is in there I just would like to be able to press a button and remove the whole unit and be able to rinse it under the tap that for me ugh, is not very nice at all I've already got dust all over this so that will be getting a wash but that's what happens to a filter with regular day-to-day -day use over one month obviously it's going to vary according to the dirt and the size of home but yeah that is well due for a clean there is another filter on the exhaust of this shark I think I showed you it when I did the introductory video at the start of January it wasn't spotlessly clean because I forgot to wash it but these shouldn't require such frequent washing but I probably will wash that as you can see it's got a bit dirtier but it's nowhere near as dirty as the uh, pre-motor filter uh, if I look at the other side of it because that's the worst side that isn't too bad so the air that comes out of this I think will be fairly clean there's no rating for dust emissions for cordless cleaners but that that side isn't too bad and that's the side that the air's passed through but that's the inner side so I will wash that as well with the other filters at least you can wash them you don't have to keep replacing them but I would buy a spare set if I were you just so if you use this as your only vacuum cleaner while you're washing one set of filters and it's drying you can pop in a spare set okay then so what are my conclusions after using this shark vacuum for the month of January well this is a top model that comes with two batteries and as I was using it around my house there was not one stage when I was using it that I'd run out of power because there was always one battery charged up what I did with this machine I used the batteries until they completely depleted what you could do if you've just got a quick job you can charge it every time so the battery is always fully charged but I because I've got two batteries I just used one battery it stopped it went dead it's often in the middle of a cleaning job but then I was able to slot in one of the new batteries and I could carry on with my cleaning if you buy a model with only one battery you may find if you've got a larger house or use it a lot if you don't keep it charged up you might find halfway in between your cleaning the battery stops and you've got to wait until it charges up so two batteries if this is going to be your only vacuum if you think it'll replace your vacuum I think you need two batteries personally now everything looked clean I used this everywhere where I'd use a normal vacuum I cleaned my hard floors cleaned my carpets I cleaned my stairs I've alternated the nozzles using the stairs sometimes I use the small turbo no nozzle the small motorized nozzle and sometimes I use the main nozzle which you can use on the stairs it's for your carpets and floors but it is small enough to use on your stairs as well I used the um, motorized nozzle on my upholstery I used the dusting brush on delicate items like my lampshades and I also used the thin dusting brush 
for use on my Venetian blinds and all around in, in nooks and crannies where the main dusting brush won't go. So I've used it as you would use it. Everything has looked clean. I've not been disappointed with the results. And as you can see, that's quite a lot of dirt that I showed you at the start of the video that this cordless cleaner's picked up. So I'm happy with that. It is a little bit loud for my ears. It's got a bit of a shrill sound. And personally, it's a little bit tall for me. If you're quite short, I just find it a little bit, I don't know. I'm used to using Dyson cleaners and they're a lot shorter than this. I mean, it's no biggie, but if you are quite small and you need something very light, this is possibly not the cleaner for you because it is heavy. Well, heavy for a cordless. I mean, I can lift it up like this, but it is in the hand if you're using it for a longer period. It can be a little bit tiring. It's not terribly bad. Personally, if you can try them out in the shop, give it a push around the shop, I would do that first. The reason my mum was going to get a similar one, I, I steered her towards a Dyson for two reasons, because I thought she'd find the Dyson lighter and easier to handle. And the second reason, my mum doesn't really do filter maintenance. And I think this would have been too much for her. The Dyson that she's got, the Dyson Fluffy, she's had several months. I looked at the filter last week and it's still more or less spotless. So Dysons are far better for filtering out the dust than the Shark. I do like this Shark, it does feel quite solid. It comes with a nice array of tools. And as you only vacuum, it could work for a cordless. But I'm going to see because I'm going to reveal to you what my vacuum of the month is for February. Now we'll see how much more dirt that that possibly will pick up for my carpets than the Shark has. Now, I know some of you are going to be grossed out by this. I'm not putting any gloves on. Oh, look, there's more dirt. I, I forgot. Look, let's be fair. There's more dirt in, in the bag. Look. So what I'm going to do is I'm keeping the dirt every month. I'm going to label this bag January Shark Cordless so I know what it's picked up. And then in February, when I empty February's vacuum of the month, we could possibly weigh out the dirt, couldn't we? I'm going to use the same sort of bag so I'm going to just pick up the big bits here and to end this segment of the video before I introduce you to February's vacuum of the month as voted by my Facebook followers. Right, I picked up what I can, but the rest of this I'm going to pick up with the shark. So it's going to go back where it, from once it came and uh, I'm going to empty it back into this bin and uh, we'll keep all this dirt so we can do a comparison. <laughs> Under this green gift bag recycled for my Christmas Day unboxing extravaganza, I've got the vacuum of the month for February as voted by you, my Facebook followers and likers. There's a link below to my Facebook page. I'm on Facebook, Instagram and Twitter. So if you want to check me out on there, you also get a chance to participate in polls like this and see some exclusive pictures and other behind the scenes chit chat. Right, so. <clears throat> I, I haven't got a gold envelope this time. So I'll run out. I gave a list of eight different models. So not models, brands. Next month I might give you a specific choice of a model, but it was just a specific brand uh, people were voting for this month. So in last place with four votes comes Bosch. And following Bosch with six votes was AEG. And then next joint, we had Shark with seven votes and Pneumatic also with seven votes. I thought Pneumatic would get more votes than that. And then with 12 votes apiece, we have three brands, Miele, Sebo and Hoover. They all scored 12. The brand that won with 19 votes is Dyson. So today I'm going to be revealing... Ba -ba -la -ba -ba -ba! The vacuum of the month for February is the latest Dyson. I've got the Dyson Kinetic Big Ball Animal that you saw me possibly opening on my Christmas Day video. This was kindly given to me by Sir James Dyson himself. And if you believe that, you'll also believe that the Queen of England gave me a Henry Rydon. 
Anyway, I have only just unboxed this. In fact, you haven't seen the unboxing of this. It will be on my channel later today, so if you want to see me unbox and assemble this, you're more than welcome to check that out. You'll see that I already have some dirt in the bin of this Dyson. That happened during the unboxing video. After I assembled it, I went over a little bit of carpet. I didn't put any dirt down. I just went over the little area of carpet I unboxed the machine on and got some dog hair and quite a lot of fine dust. So that will be added to all the other stuff I'll be picking up over the month of February. I'm thinking, personally, that I might get more dirt out of the carpets than the shark got, but we'll have to wait and see so tune in at the end of Feb and we'll see how much dirt is picked up bear in mind that February is a slightly shorter month than January well there you have it that's February's vacuum of the month the Dyson Kinetic Big Ball Animal if you have any questions about this or the shark cordless please comment below and don't forget to tune in on the 1st of March to see how I got on with the Dyson and also to see what my vacuum of the month for March will be and finally, I've got a little favour to ask my viewers. If you don't subscribe to my other two channels, Roger's Bits and Doings and Roger's Box of Delights, I'd be most grateful if you could subscribe. Now, a lot of you know that YouTube are changing the rules, so you now have to have a thousand subscribers to enable any sort of monetization. Now, I don't make a lot of money from those channels, but, you know, it's the principle of the thing. So, if you could, just click, click on subscribe on those two channels. There'll be a link below for you to do so. You don't even have to watch the videos, but you might be interested in some of the stuff I do on Roger's Bits and Doings because it's more of a vlogging channel. There are other things on, it's not vacuum cleaners, but there are the odd vacuum cleaner mentions and comments, you know, because I am me. I'm obsessed with vacuum cleaners, so obviously vlogging of my life will normally involve a bit of vacuum action. But most of the vacuum action you'll see on here. But if you're interested in anything else I get up to, please subscribe to Roger's Bits and Doings and Roger's Box of Delights as well. Thanks for watching. I'll see you all very soon. Bye for now.